The International Tribunal for the Prosecution of Persons Responsible for Serious Violations of International Humanitarian Law Committed in the Territory of the Former Yugoslavia Since 1991, more commonly referred to as the International Criminal Tribunal for the Former Yugoslavia was a body of the United Nations established to prosecute serious crimes committed during the Yugoslav Wars, and to try their perpetrators. The tribunal was an ad hoc court located in The Hague, Netherlands. The court was established by Resolution 827 of the United Nations Security Council, which was passed on 25 May 1993. It had jurisdiction over four clusters of crimes committed on the territory of the former Yugoslavia since 1991, grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions, violations of the laws or customs of war, genocide, and crimes against humanity. The maximum sentence it could impose was life imprisonment. Various countries signed agreements with the UN to carry out custodial sentences. A total of 161 persons were indicted. The final indictments were issued in December 2004, the last of which were confirmed and unsealed in the spring of 2005. The final fugitive, Goran Hadjic, was arrested on the 20th of July 2011. The final judgment was issued on the 29th of November 2017 and the institution formally ceased to exist on the 31st of December 2017. Residual functions of the ICTY, including oversight of sentences and consideration of any appeal proceedings initiated since the 1st of July 2013, are under the jurisdiction of a successor body, the Mechanism for International Criminal Tribunals. Topic History Topic <creation>, Creation United Nations Security Council Resolution 808 of the 22nd of February 1993 decided that an international tribunal shall be established for the prosecution of persons responsible for serious violations of international humanitarian law committed in the territory of the former Yugoslavia since 1991, and calling on the Secretary General to submit for consideration by the Council a report on all aspects of this matter, including specific proposals and where appropriate options taking into account suggestions put forward in this regard by member states." The court was originally proposed by German Foreign Minister Klaus Kinkel. By 25 May 1993, the international community had tried to pressure the leaders of the former Yugoslavian republics diplomatically, militarily, politically, economically, and, with resolution 827 through juridical means. Resolution 827 of 25 May 1993 approved S. 25704 Report of the Secretary General and adopted the Statute of the International Tribunal annexed to it, formally creating the ICTY. It would have jurisdiction over four clusters of crime committed on the territory of the former SFR Yugoslavia since 1991, grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions, violations of the laws or customs of war, genocide, and crime against humanity. The maximum sentence it can impose is life imprisonment. First annual report of the ICTY, located on official website. Implementation. In 1993, the ICTY built its internal infrastructure. Seventeen states have signed an agreement with the ICTY to carry out custodial sentences. 1994 In the first year of its existence, the tribunal laid the foundations for its existence as a judicial organ. The tribunal established the legal framework for its operations by adopting the rules of procedure and evidence, as well as its rules of detention and directive for the assignment of defense counsel. Together these rules established a legal aid system for the tribunal. As the ICTY is part of the United Nations and as it was the first international court for criminal justice, the development of a juridical infrastructure was considered quite a challenge. However after the first year the first ICTY judges had drafted and adopted all the rules for court proceedings. 1994 1995 the ICTY established its offices within the Aegon Insurance Building in The Hague which was, at the time, still partially in use by Aegon and detention facilities in Scheveningen in The Hague the Netherlands. 
The ICTY hired now many staff members. By July 1994 there were sufficient staff members in the office of the prosecutor to begin field investigations and by November 1994 the first indictment was presented and confirmed. In 1995, the entire staff numbered more than 200 persons and came from all over the world. Moreover, some governments assigned their legally trained people to the ICTY. Operation. In 1994 the first indictment was issued against the Bosnian Serb concentration camp commander Dragan Nikolic. This was followed on 13 February 1995 by two indictments comprising 21 individuals which were issued against a group of 21 Bosnian Serbs charged with committing atrocities against Muslim and Croat civilian prisoners. While the war in the former Yugoslavia was still raging, the ICTY prosecutors showed that an international court was viable. However, no accused was arrested. The court confirmed eight indictments against 46 individuals and issued arrest warrants. Bosnian Serb indictee Dusko Tadic became the subject of the tribunal's first trial. Tadic was arrested by German police in Munich in 1994 for his alleged actions in the Prigidor region in Bosnia Herzegovina, especially his actions in the Amarska, Trinopolia, and Karaturm detention camps. He made his first appearance before the ICTY trial chamber on 26 April 1995, and pleaded not guilty to all of the charges in the indictment. 1995 1996 Between June 1995 and June 1996, ten public indictments had been confirmed against a total of 33 individuals. Six of the newly indicted persons were transferred in the tribunal's detention unit. In addition to Dusko Tadic, by June 1996 the tribunal had Tihamir Blaskic, Drazen Erdemovic, Zejnal Dalalik, Stravko Music, Esad Lanzo and Hazim Delik in custody. Erdemovic became the first person to enter a guilty plea before the tribunal's court. Between 1995 and 1996, the ICTY dealt with miscellaneous cases involving several detainees, which never reached the trial stage. Topic. Accomplishments In 2004, the ICTY published a list of five accomplishments in justice and law, spearheading the shift from impunity to accountability, pointing out that, until very recently, it was the only court judging crimes committed as part of the Yugoslav conflict, since prosecutors in the former Yugoslavia were, as a rule, reluctant to prosecute such crimes establishing the facts, highlighting the extensive evidence gathering and lengthy findings of fact that tribunal judgments produced, bringing justice to thousands of victims and giving them a voice, pointing out the large number of witnesses that had been brought before the tribunal, the accomplishments in international law, describing the fleshing out of several international criminal law concepts which had not been ruled on since the Nuremberg trials, strengthening the rule of law, referring to the tribunal's role in promoting the use of international standards in war crimes prosecutions by former Yugoslav republics. Closure The United Nations Security Council passed resolutions 1503 in August 2003 and 1534 in March 2004, which both called for the completion of all cases at both the ICTY and its sister tribunal, the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda by 2010. In December 2010, the Security Council adopted Resolution 1966, which established the Mechanism for International Criminal Tribunals a body intended to gradually assume residual functions from both the ICTY and the ICTR as they wound down their mandate. Resolution 1966 called upon the tribunal to finish its work by the 31st of December 2014 to prepare for its closure and transfer of its responsibilities. In a completion strategy report issued in May 2011, the ICTY indicated it aimed to complete all trials by the end of 2012 and all appeals by 2015, with the exception of Radovan Karadzic, whose trial was expected to end in 2014, and Ratko Mladic and Goran Hadjic, who were at large at that time and were not arrested until late. Later that year, the MICT's ICTY branch began functioning on 1 July 2013. 
Per the transitional arrangements adopted by the UN Security Council, the ICTY was to conduct and complete all outstanding first instance trials, including those of Karadzic, Miladic and Hadjic. The ICTY would also conduct and complete all appeal proceedings for which the notice of appeal against the judgment or sentence was filed before 1 July 2013. The MICT will handle any appeals for which notice is filed after that date. The final ICTY trial to be completed in the first instance was that of Ratko Miladic, who was convicted on of November 2017. The final case to be considered by the ICTY was an appeal proceeding encompassing six individuals, whose sentences were upheld on 29 November 2017. <laughs> organization While operating, the tribunal employed around 900 staff. Its organizational components were chambers, registry and the office of the prosecutor OTP. Prosecutors The prosecutor was responsible for investigating crimes, gathering evidence and prosecutions and was head of the Office of the Prosecutor The prosecutor was appointed by the UN Security Council upon nomination by the UN Secretary General, the last prosecutor was Serge Bramertz. Previous prosecutors have been Ramon Escobar Shalom of Venezuela 1993-1994. However, he never took up that office. Richard Goldstone of South Africa 1994 to 1996, Luis Arbor of Canada 1996 to 1999, and Carla Del Ponte of Switzerland 1999 to 2007. Richard Goldstone, Luis Arbor and Carla Del Ponte also simultaneously served as the prosecutor of the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda until 2003. Graham Blewett Australia served as the deputy prosecutor from 1994 until 2004. David Tolbert, the president of the International Centre for Transitional Justice, was also appointed deputy prosecutor of the ICTY in 2004. Chambers Chambers encompassed the judges and their aides. The tribunal operated three trial chambers and one appeals chamber. The president of the tribunal was also the presiding judge of the appeals chamber. Judges <inaudible> 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 At the time of the court's dissolution, there were seven permanent judges and one ad hoc judge who served on the tribunal. A total of 86 judges have been appointed to the tribunal from 52 United Nations member states. Of those judges, 51 were permanent judges, 36 were ad litem judges, and one was an ad hoc judge. Note that one judge served as both a permanent and ad litem judge, and another served as both a permanent and ad hoc judge. UN member and observer states could each submit up to two nominees of different nationalities to the UN Secretary General. The UN Secretary General submitted this list to the UN Security Council which selected from 28 to 42 nominees and submitted these nominees to the UN General Assembly. The UN General Assembly then elected 14 judges from that list. Judges served for four years and were eligible for re-election. The UN Secretary General appointed replacements in case of vacancy for the remainder of the term of office concerned. On the 21st of October 2015, Judge Carmel Agius of Malta was elected President of the ICTY, and Liu Dachun of China was elected Vice President. They have assumed their positions on the 17th of November 2015. His predecessors were Antonio Cassese of Italy 1993 to 1997, Gabriel Kirk MacDonald of the United States 1997 to 1999, Claude Jorda of France 1999 to 2002, Theodore Marin of the United States 2002 to 2005, Fausto Pocar of Italy 2005 to 2008, Patrick Robinson of Jamaica 2008 to 2011, and Theodore Marin 2011 to 2015. Topic. Registry 
The registry was responsible for handling the administration of the tribunal. Activities included keeping court records, translating court documents, transporting and accommodating those who appear to testify, operating the public information section, and such general duties as payroll administration, personnel management, and procurement. It was also responsible for the detention unit for indictees being held during their trial and the legal aid program for indictees who cannot pay for their own defense. It was headed by the registrar, a position occupied over the years by Theo van Boven of the Netherlands February 1994 to December 1994, Dorothee de Sampaio Garrido Nike of the Netherlands 1995 to 2000, Hans Holthuis of the Netherlands 2001 to 2009, and John Hawking of Australia May 2009 to December 2017. Topic: Detention facilities. Those defendants on trial and those who were denied a provisional release were detained at the United Nations Detention Unit on the premises of the penitentiary institution Hoglanden, location Scheveningen in Belgisch Park, a suburb of The Hague, located some three kilometres by road from the courthouse. The indicted were housed in private cells which had a toilet, shower, radio, satellite TV, personal computer without internet access and other luxuries. They were allowed to phone family and friends daily and could have conjugal visits. There was also a library, a gym and various rooms used for religious observances. The inmates were allowed to cook for themselves. All of the inmates mixed freely and were not segregated on the basis of nationality. As the cells were more akin to a university residence instead of a jail, some had derisively referred to the ICT as the Hague Hilton. The reason for this luxury relative to other prisons is that the first president of the court wanted to emphasize that the indictees were innocent until proven guilty. Indictees The tribunal indicted 161 individuals between 1997 and 2004 and completed proceedings with them as follows 111 had trials completed by the ICTY 21 were acquitted by the ICTY 18 acquittals have stood Two were originally acquitted by the ICTY, but following successful appeal by the prosecution the acquittals were overturned and a retrial is being conducted by the MICT, and One was acquitted by the ICTY, but the prosecution has filed an appeal to the MICT that is being considered Ninety were convicted and sentenced by the ICTY Eighty-one were transferred to fourteen different states where they served their prison sentences, had sentences that amounted to time spent in detention during trial, or died after conviction. Sixteen remain imprisoned. Fifty-six completed their sentences. Nine died while completing their sentences or after conviction awaiting transfer. Seven were convicted and sentenced, and remain in MICT detention awaiting transfer, and Two were convicted and sentenced, but have filed appeals to the MICT that are being considered. Thirteen had their cases transferred to courts in Bosnia and Herzegovina 10, Croatia 2, and Serbia 1. Thirty-seven had their cases terminated prior to trial completion, because the indictments were withdrawn 20, or the indictees died before or after transfer to the tribunal 17. The indictees ranged from common soldiers to generals and police commanders all the way to prime ministers. Slobodan Milosevic was the first sitting head of state indicted for war crimes. Other high-level indictees included Milan Babic, former president of the Republika Srpska Krajina, Ramush Haradina, former prime minister of Kosovo, Radovan Karadžić, former president of the Republika Srpska, Ratko Mladic, former commander of the Bosnian Serb army, and Ante Gotovina, former general of the Croatian army. The very first hearing at the ICTY was referral request in the Tadic case on 8 November 1994. Croat Serb general and former president of the Republic of Serbian Krajina Goran Hadžić was the last fugitive wanted by the tribunal to be arrested on 20 July 2011, An additional 23 individuals have been the subject of contempt proceedings. Criticism 
Skeptics argued that an international court could not function while the war in the former Yugoslavia was still going on. This would be a huge undertaking for any court, but for the ICTY it would be an even greater one, as the new tribunal still needed judges, a prosecutor, a registrar, investigative and support staff, an extensive interpretation and translation system, a legal aid structure, premises, equipment, courtrooms, detention facilities, guards and all the related funding. Criticisms of the court include on 6 December 2006, the tribunal at The Hague approved the use of force-feeding of Serbian politician Vojislav Sechel. They decided it was not "...torture, inhuman or degrading treatment if there is a medical necessity to do so and if the manner in which the detainee is force-fed is not inhuman or degrading." Reducing the indictment charges after the arrest of Ratko Mladic, Croatian officials publicly condemned Chief Prosecutor Serge Bramertz for his announcement that the former Bosnian Serb general, will be tried solely for crimes allegedly committed in Bosnia, not in Croatia. Critics have questioned whether the tribunal exacerbates tensions rather than promotes reconciliation, as is claimed by tribunal supporters. Polls show a generally negative reaction to the tribunal among both Serbs and Croats. A majority of Serbs and Croats have expressed doubts regarding the ICTY's integrity and question the tenability of its legal procedures. 68% of indictees have been Serbs or Montenegrins, to the extent that a sizable portion of the Bosnian Serb and Croatian Serb political and military leaderships have been indicted. Many have seen this as reflecting bias, while the tribunal's defenders have seen this as indicative of the actual proportion of crimes committed. However, Marko Hor claimed that, aside from Milosevic, only Momčilo Perisic chief of the general staff of the Yugoslav army, who was acquitted, has been indicted from the Serbian military or political top when it comes to wars in Croatia and Bosnia. According to Hor, a former employee at the ICTY, an investigative team worked on indictments of senior members of the joint criminal enterprise including not only Milosevic but also Velko Kadijevic, Blagoj Ajic, Borisov Jovic, Branko Kostic, Momer Bolotovic and others. However, Hor claims that, due to Karla Del Ponte's intervention, these drafts were rejected, and the indictment limited to Milosevic alone. There have been allegations of censorship. In July 2011, the Appeals Chamber of ICTY confirmed the judgment of the trial chamber, which found journalist and former tribunal's OTP spokesperson Florence Hartman guilty of contempt of court and fined her €7,000. She disclosed documents of FR Yugoslavia's Supreme Defense Council meetings and criticized the tribunal for granting confidentiality of some information in them to protect Serbia's vital national interests during Bosnia's lawsuit against the country for genocide in front of the International Court of Justice. Hartman argued that Serbia was freed of the charge of genocide because ICTY redacted certain information in the council meetings. Since these documents have in the meantime been made public by the ICTY itself, a group of organizations and individuals, who supported her, said that the tribunal in this appellate proceedings, "...imposed a form of censorship aimed to protect the international judges from any form of criticism." France refused to extradite Hartman to serve the prison sentence issued against her by the ICTY after she refused to pay the €7,000 fine. Klaus Peter Wilsch compared the Ante Gotovina verdict, in which the late Croatian president Franjo Tudman was posthumously found to have been participating in a joint criminal enterprise, with the 897 cadaver synod trial in Rome, when Pope Stephen VI had the corpse of Pope Formosus exhumed, put on trial and posthumously convicted. Some sentences have been considered too mild, even within the tribunal, complained at small sentences of convicted war criminals in comparison with their crimes. In 2010, Veselin Schlievenchenin's sentence for his involvement in the Vukovar massacre was cut from 17 to 10 years, which caused outrage in Croatia. Upon hearing that news, Vesna Bosanic, who had been in charge of the Vukovar hospital during the fall of the city, said that the ICTY is dead. For her, for crimes that he Schlievenchenin, had committed in Vukovar, notably at Avkara, he should have been jailed for life. I'm outraged. The Hague-based tribunal has showed again that it is not a just tribunal." Daniel Rehik, the head of Croatian Association of Prisoners in Serbian concentration camps, said, "...the shock of families whose beloved ones were killed at Avkara is unimaginable." 
The court made a crucial mistake by accepting a statement of a JNA officer to whom Schlievenchenin was a commander. I cannot understand that." Pavla Struger's eight-year sentence for shelling of Dubrovnik, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, also caused outrage in Croatia. Judge Kevin Parker of Australia was named in a Croatian journal Nacional as a main cause of the system's failure for having dismissed the testimonies of numerous witnesses. Some of the defendants, such as Slobodan Milosevic, claimed that the court has no legal authority because it was established by the UN Security Council instead of the UN General Assembly and so had not been created on a broad international basis. The tribunal was established on the basis of Chapter 7 of the United Nations Charter, the relevant portion of which reads, "...the Security Council can take measures to maintain or restore international peace and security." The legal criticism has been succinctly stated in a memorandum issued by Austrian professor Hans Kochler, which was submitted to the President of the Security Council in 1999. British Conservative Party MEP Daniel Hannan has called for the court to be abolished, claiming it is anti-democratic and a violation of national sovereignty. The interactive thematic debate on the role of international criminal justice in reconciliation was convened on 10 April 2013 by the President of the General Assembly during the resumed part of the GAZ 67th session. The debate was scheduled after the convictions of Ante Godovina and Miladin Markic for inciting war crimes against Serbs in Croatia were overturned by an ICTY appeals panel in November 2012. The ICTY president Theodor Marin announced that all three Hague war crimes courts turned down the invitation of UNGA president to participate in the debate about their work. The president of the General Assembly described Marin's refusal to participate in this debate as scandalous. He emphasized that he does not shy away from criticizing the ICTY, which has "...convicted nobody for inciting crimes committed against Serbs in Croatia." Tomislav Nikolic, the president of Serbia criticized the ICTY, claiming it did not contribute but hindered reconciliation in the former Yugoslavia. He added that although there is no significant ethnic disproportion among the number of casualties in the Yugoslav wars, the ICTY sentenced Serbs and ethnic Serbs to a combined total of 1,150 years in prison while claiming that members of other ethnic groups have been sentenced to a total of 55 years for crimes against Serbs. Vitaly Cherkin, the ambassador of Russia to the UN, criticized the work of the ICTY, especially the overturned convictions of Godovina and Ramush Haradina. Regarding the final case on November 29, 2017 proceeding encompassing six Bosnian Croat individuals, one of whom Slobodan Praljak in protest in court drank a poison and subsequently died, the Prime Minister of Croatia Andrej Plenković claimed the verdict was unjust and Praljak's suicide speaks of deep moral injustice to the six Croats, from Bosnia and Herzegovina and the Croat people." He criticized the verdict because it did not recognize the assistance and support provided by Croatia to Bosnia and Herzegovina and collaboration of both armies at a time when the neighboring state was faced with the "...greater Serbian aggression." And when its territorial integrity was compromised, as well it alludes to the link between the then leadership of the Republic of Croatia, while in the previous verdict to Bosnian Serb Ratko Mladic does not recognize the connection with Serbia's state officials at that time. <laughs> Response to criticism Supporters of the work of the ICTY responded to critics in various publications. In a response to David Harlan's Selective Justice, Yelena Subodic, an assistant professor of political science at Georgia State University and author of Hijacked Justice, dealing with the past in the Balkans, responded that the critics of the tribunal miss the point, which is not to deliver justice for past wrongs equally for all sides, fostering reconciliation, but to carefully measure each case on its own merits. We should judge the work of the tribunal by its legal expertise, not by the political outcomes we desire." Marco Hoare claims the accusations of the tribunal's "...selective justice," stem from Serbian nationalist propaganda. He wrote, this is, of course, the claim that hard-line Serb nationalists and supporters of Slobodan Milosevic have been making for about the last two decades. Instead of carrying out any research into the actual record of the ICTY in order to support his thesis, Harlan simply repeats a string of clichés of the kind that frequently appear in anti-Hague diatribes by Serb nationalists.
Topic See also List of people indicted in the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia Command Responsibility International Criminal Court Trial of Gotovina et al. <laughs>